discuss a little bit. A lot of we've already gone over, you know, the uh, about here, and you know, this double click on here that, that gets you into the software. I don't think that exists anymore, um, which is a good thing. So you can actually go into the software. Um, but we went through all the the lists already, directories, settings. So here's where we want to talk about the method. <coughs> So this um, talks about creating the method used for the synthesis. One method consists of three components, the cycle, the branch table, and the parameters. So you've got your, your cycle, your branch table, and your parameters to make up the method. And uh, see, so the single coupling cycle consists of subroutines which will be executed in the order programmed in the cycle table. So this is the cycle table. and so. This is where, and they're gonna be uh, run in this order. In other words, it does this, then this, then this, then this. And you can have up to 15 different steps. 15 subroutines executed step by step for every synthesis. All defined and accessible subroutines are listed in the window on the right side. So that's this window here. So this table has all of your subroutines that you can use and all of your branches. Same thing here where we select it here and then we go over to here to install it. And then selecting it here and backspace to remove it. Always starts from the first step, continues to the last step in the cycle. Each subroutine can be repeated. So we didn't do this in our subroutine last. We didn't put any quantities in here. It automatically with no quantity assumes it's a one. But we can, let's say we wanted to, some of the uh, unit supports uh, need like a double D block on the first step, that type of thing. Or if we want to make sure that we get the D block, we can add a two in here. But that does the double D block at every step? Yes. Yep. So you'd have to um, maybe run a separate routine or a different method and then run that, that method and then do another method. And you have the ability with, with two. So um, each subroutine can be according to the entry in the quantity field. An example above the subroutine is deprotect, couple, cap, oxidate, oxidize. So the next one is this branch table. And basically what it is, is allows you to create branches based on ammonites. So let's say you have some ammonites are harder to couple than others. You would have different coupling times, that type of thing. So in your coupling step, you're gonna call a specific branch based on that ammonite that you want mm -hmm. to use. And so, um, So let's say we want a longer coupling time for A, right? So that's where we would set up the branch. Yes. Yes. But would that do it for every A? Every time there's yes. an A? Yeah. Every A. But what if I just have one L and A in the middle and I wanted it to Well, your L and A would be like assigned, like... Yeah, like see, there's one J for U or, or L or O. There's all these mm -hmm. different specialty ammonites. And so you can, you know, you'd be selecting all the way so it's not just A, G, C, T, it's basically you could have a branch for each one of them. So it's 
at the L and A and you did a longer coupling time, every time it pulls from that bottle, it would have the longer coupling time? Yes. As long as you put that in your subroutine. So in that coupling subroutine, you have to select that branch. And this table gives you all the different branches you can select as well. So this one micro branch is what it's saying for A. So last night when we ran A, actually, and it's using it for C, G, T, those are all one micro, one micro branches. Here's a one micro branch Z, you know, so there are some different ones, but last night we used this one micro branch because we just ran A, G, C, T. So if we looked at our coupling subroutine, Here's that one micron coupling subroutine that we used. We called up branch one. So branch one, if we look at that method table. So branch one is one micro branch. So that's the one we use. If we were to put branch two, there's nothing in branch two, but we could put a different one in branch two. So subroutines are going to be basically the heart of when you build your subroutines. So you, you're going to build a branch table um, based on each ammonite. You know, and you build your cycle based on these steps, these subroutines. Also in the method, Okay, so the choice of the uh, choice of the amide position boards to branch with program can be made in the choice line on the left. So um, that's basically where you where we were just talking about selecting here. You take that guy here and put it here, um, and then so if I would have had a different branch over here, and in that coupling routine I called two, it would use that branch instead of that one. <clears throat> Okay, the choice of the subroutine can be made by clicking on the name. Same thing, you click on here, I got showed you here. So all the subroutines that are defined are listed in this window. So as you start making your own, you'll see them populate here. Making your own with, with different naming. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here are the parameters. This is where you tell it um, one column mode. So some of the things we're gonna talk about in the software have to do with um, what happens in the subroutine when you uh, put these parentheses or brackets in here. Um, that's gonna go column one, then column two, then column three, then column four, five, six, seven, eight. Then it's gonna go to the next step. But one column mode is no, it's actually gonna do two at a time. So we go one and two, three and four, five and six, seven and eight. That's useful for speeding things up. Um, in this environment here, I can't see you really needing to use that. Um, you can always run this overnight. So um, unless you've got something that's really super long and you wanna cut it in half, you can, you can use the, the uh, one column mode no. But typically we use yes. So that's what we did the other night. <coughs> We took test T, which basically just put that to yes. So switch speed. Um, so what they're saying is there's a closer e explanation of this in chapter uh, 17 programming examples. So, um, but the status can be clicked by change by clicking in the field. So switch speed amidite and switch speed reagent. So defines the switching speed of the valves while mixed amidite and other reagents flow during the synthesis. So there's a closer explanation of this, but what that means is it's not a linear um, relationship. In other words, the higher that number, it's not necessarily, you know, this isn't, isn't three milliseconds or something like this, but it might go, you know, one is 56, two is 210, you know, there's, there's a, a staggered plot of the switching speeds. What that means is I'm gonna leave it on a certain amount and, and then turn it off. And 
you'll hear it when it goes click, 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 click. It's using that switch speed to put in cap A, cap B, and that's gonna be a reagent switch speed. And then you can hear it with coupling with um, the activator and the amidite. You'll, you'll hear it going click, 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 click. And that's using these switch speed numbers. Typically those don't have to be changed. Yeah, I would say we probably would probably leave those, yes. right? Yeah. yeah, until you get more advanced. And um, yeah. so then here's collect DMT. So this is another one. So single call mode should always be yes. Collect DMT probably always should be yes as well. I mean, you do want to collect DMT. The only time you wouldn't want to collect DMT is if you have a problem with your trying to monitor. Let's say a vial broken or the LED is out, something like that. There's a, there's a reason why not to use it, then then don't use it. But other, other than that, this would always be yes. And these add times right here, there are also things that, that you may or may not want to change. What it is, you, you can change these, but, but I'd say what it is, is it has to do with this single column mode. So if I say single column mode, no, then that means I'm going to get two columns at a time. And what they're saying is when we did our flow check, and I can show you this on our flow check, um, if I get 2.2 out of one column, I don't get 4.4 when I run both. I only get like three. Hmm. So there's some loss by running two columns. And what this is, is this gives you an extra amount of time. And when I open up the, the sequence, the subroutine, you can see it says plus T. And whenever it says plus T, if you're in dual column mode, it looks at that table and says, how much extra time do I need to add? So to try to make up for that less flow okay. by using two columns. So again, if you only use single column mode, yes. So you're only single column mode, then this doesn't really apply. I mean, we'll probably use both columns, like one yeah. and then also two, just yes. because we're scaling up or whatever. Yes, so It'll make it go faster. Yeah. Right? Especially in long stuff like RNA, things like that. No. Um, but when you do use the double column mode, you do you may have to play with this time in order to get the correct amount of flow that you need. And so there's one for amidites, one for reagents, one for tet and amidite. So that's your coupling one, and then one for mixed reagents or your your mixed bases or, or mixed reagents that's for capping. So this would be coupling, this would be capping, and this would be a specific amidite or a specific reagent. So when you say we should play with that a little bit, if we're doing two column mode, like... Yeah, so so right now it's probably gonna give you a pretty good um, start, but, you know, if you, let's say, ran in two column mode versus one column mode and you saw a problem with coupling, you would consider changing mm -hmm. that value adding a little bit more to it okay. so that you've got a little bit more flow. Gotcha. And this, this AMD dissolve time, that's not a function right now. So it's not applicable in this software version. And then um, it said, you know, when you've got your cycle, branch table, and parameters all set, the method can be saved. So you can give it a new name and then save it. Or you can exit. So save as and the key okay must be clicked. So if you try to save it with the same name, it's gonna actually make two. It's not gonna overwrite the one. So you'll always wanna give it a new name. And like I said, um, when you look at basically, here's a list of all your methods. And so, when you go to save them, they'll they'll show up here. <coughs> 
and then um, click on the print button button causes printing of the cycle branch table and parameters for the selected method that was also in that um, this button here okay we talked about the directory already we talked about the com settings okay so now we're going to get into the, the real probably the most important part here um, subroutine programming okay subroutine is the most important tool for detailing detailed controlling of the system so this is where you actually are setting your flow your time you know all the things that really matter in your synthesis um, every instrument's activity will be defined in the subroutine so the single subroutine consists of 25 steps. So you, these are the steps in the subroutine to go across. And so what you can do, um, you, you can pull these up and you can actually open them, let's say, So, you can stack them up and kind of see the whole process. So, you know, now I'm looking at the D, D protect step, D block step, and then the coupling step. You can kind of lay them all out to where you've got everything going in order. And then you can even pull up your branch. In this case, it's branch one. which is the one micron branch. So there we're basically saying, here's what's happening during D-block and coupling, and then we can open up the capping and the oxidation tube and, and get a good idea. Okay, so the single um, subroutine consists of 25 steps. You see, you can scroll through those. So the deep protect step is using a lot of steps because it's so that's it just does, deep protection. Yes, that's just a twenty five steps deep protect step. Yep, because it does a lot of pulsing, gassing of the trial monitor. It puts so after all the pulsing that it does to put uh, the TCA up through there, it also um, puts gas into the trial monitor to push everything into the vials in the trial monitor, and then it goes through and, and washes the column. And then it gasses the column, so it washes the column, dries the column, then it, it washes the main waste, and then it washes the column again, all the columns, one at a time. And then it dries the columns, all of them, and then uh, dries the main channel. So in this instance, 25 steps is defined through time, source, whether it's mixed or not, so maybe another source, like in the case of Cap A, Cap B, or mm. uh, Ket, Activator, and Amidite. Okay. And then you've got a destination. So whether you want it to go to the column, the trial monitor, the waste. This is called a single column pointer. So the difference between this, this section here and this step here. So this is saying 0.5 seconds of TCA to the column. Since it doesn't have the single column pointer, it's saying to all columns. So the first thing it's gonna do is put 
half a second of TCA to all the columns. So in other words, all of these will be open. All the columns will be open and, and stuff will get pushed up into here. So that's gonna fill the chamber and basically start up all the columns. The single column pointer is sort of a bracket or parentheses, if you will. What that says is do everything from here to here. So if there was things up in here, you would do that. So basically it's from the time you get one of these ons, it does everything here and everything here to each column one at a time. So instead of all columns simultaneously, I'm doing one column at a time. Okay. So it's going to, to do this subroutine in this order. It's gonna put TCA to all the columns simultaneously. Then it's gonna put TCA to the trital monitor plus time before using two columns at a time to each column at a time. So it'll, it'll do this to this and then this and then this and then, then goes down the line. Then it's gonna wait and then it's gonna do this to each one at a time. Then it's gonna wait and it's gonna do this to each one at a time again. Wait, do each one of these at a time again. And this is where I was saying, we're putting four times to the travel monitor. Maybe here we put to the waste, to the to the column waste. Okay. Um, basically like this, basically the same column. So in other words, so this way we don't overfill the travel monitor. And maybe we'll have a little bit longer pulse, maybe go one second here and then take this point eight, um, even to one second, but put it through the waste. So you can have more D block, but so you, you can you can use more D block than the vial can hold. It's just whatever you put to the trial monitor has to be a, the vial has to be able to hold it. Yeah. So like if, if we wanted um, to deblock more for whatever reason, we have to keep that in mind. Yes. Because if we have a stubborn whatever trigger yes. group, that won't come off. Okay. So we first prime the channel and then we start flowing to the trial monitor. And we throw flowing again to the trial monitor. And then we can always flow to column, flow to column, <coughs> and then we gas and whatever we told to go to the trial monitor will now go to the trial monitor. So we're actually gassing to the trial monitor. And it's always best to put the first couple steps to the trial monitor because those are going to be your most bright orange. But if it's 10 micromolar scale, like, is it going to use more deblocker and then the vial's going to be full, right? Yep, so you would only take, let's say, one then to the trial monitor. Yeah. So, and your first one would only be big enough to fill that vial, let's say. Sure. And then you, all the rest just go to waste. And then you push that big, big slug into the, to the trial monitor. Yeah, and then like I said, we gas, we flow gas to push the, everything that we had already pushed up into the trial monitor. So the single column pointer is the big one I was uh, um, trying to point out here, is, is when you want when you want it to, to do all columns simultaneously, you don't use these. And wherever you have one, you need another. So it's like a start and a stop. Hmm. And what it's saying is, first I wanted to put all the columns at the same time. But here, I don't want to do that. I want to do one column at a time. So I put these single column pointers on as a start and a stop. So everything I want to do one column at a time, I do that. Now this subroutine is not specific for any scale or anything. It's just sort of a generic subroutine for This subroutine is actually a one micromole. Oh, it is a one micromole. Yeah, okay. it's a one micromole step. Okay, that's subroutine. good. Yep. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm guessing we probably wouldn't play too much with this unless we had like very sluggish or specific like yeah. branching points or something, right? right. Where but we here's where you do all yeah, the work. Yeah, you know, here's where yeah. all the work is going. You basically say what time, from where to where. That's all in this subroutine, and you got 25 steps to do it. Plus, you have the ability to branch, which kind of gives you uh, another set of steps. So this is a branch. So if I were to call up a branch here, I'd get a whole nother 25 steps. And then it's gonna finish that branch. So once it starts this branch, it's, it's, it calls up this branch, it's gonna do everything in that branch and then go back to the sequence. Okay. So it gives you a, like another 25 steps. I see. 
Yeah, because you have that branch thing under. Right. Yeah. And on here, you can I see the single column pointer is on, and it's basically saying, um, I'm going to flow two of tet to the column plus time, <coughs> then ten, uh, one second of amidite and tet, and it's going to do those switching and to the column plus time, and it's going to do that to each column. And then it's going to wait six seconds, and then it's going to um, do gas, uh, wash, and dry, and then it's going to go back to its subroutine. So, in a way, you could you could call the branch a couple of times to do this step if you wanted to, let's say, double couple, or you could just say, let's do the coupling step twice mm -hmm. in, in the quantity side and run the whole thing two times. Mm -hmm. And so that's, this is basically your, your main guy where you're telling the, the synthesizer what to do. So each of these, you have a, uh, the, each step of the four cycle, uh, four step cycle, you basically make one of these that determines exactly what you want the machine to do. How many washing, how much gassing, you know, basically you wanna, you wanna wash the column, dry the column, wash the main waste, dry the main waste, that kind of thing. Now, just theoretically, if we were doing like a double coupling on whatever, like gamut ID or something, um, like we would put the branch point at the end of like this detritilation, like we'd do the coupling. And then after that specific coupling, we would branch out and say, kind of repeat that coupling again for as an example before the capping step. You know what I mean? If we're doing like a double coupling. Yeah, so you're or, double coupling, you would either say quantity of two, which means it would run the whole coupling routine twice, yeah. including the branches. Okay. Or you would go and say add two branches in that one coupling step where, where it ran through, did a coupling, then um, during the subroutine of coupling, it jumps down to the branch again, runs that other coupling step that you put in there, um, and then jumps back out. The, all that's done before it goes to capping. Yeah, so, okay, well, that's cool. Yeah, we never had that functionality. Yeah. Okay, and one of the things I'll point out here is the delay, these delays are in seconds, but the flow times are in 0.1 seconds. And that's because the flows are typically in that microliter range, you know, so you, you want to, if you're getting 330 microliters per second, you're going to get 33 per 0.1. So it gives you that finer control. Whereas the delay is just how many seconds you want to delay. This is kind of a little picture of the uh, of the flow we talked about. It's very small here. So basically, you know, you've got your your gas, your ACN, your waste, you know, your TCA. So. You flow ACN up through the channel to column one, and then either go to the waste or to the tridal. So that's pretty much your basic flow. Okay, and so here's where we're getting into this source code. So when you're writing these subroutines, you're not writing TCA. You're actually entering a code. Okay. So for TCA, the code is four. So if I put a four here, it chooses TCA. If I put a one, amidite, two, tet, three, ACN, five, oxy. You should almost print that and put that on the wall. Absolutely. I, yeah. I carry it with me. So. So this should be right by the machine where you're programming because, and there's another one of these, you know, there's a, there's a couple examples. So, so not only from the source, but also the, the, the mixed, you know, so um, this is where like say, cap A, cap B, that'd be six or seven. So, so this would be cap A and that would be, you know, cap B. Um, 
Does but, it matter if you mix like Source A mixed, Cap A, Cap B, or So reverse? Source would be Cap A and the mix okay. would be Cap B. Okay, always has to be that way. Source would be the amidite and the, or the tet and the mix would be the amidite, you know, okay. that kind of thing. But the destination also has another column under here. So here's the destination code where you have column, um, flow through the column from the top to the bottom, works only when gas is a source. So then you mix B, mix T, mix W. Um, so column like would be number one. So in, in a source, so if, if I'm up here in source and I push number one, it's gonna be ammonite. If I go down here to, to destination, I push number one, it's gonna be column. Yeah. So makes, makes these sense. are the fields that you have to, mm -hmm. to uh, take pictures of and basically learn yeah, so. how to program with. That'll, that'll be a bit of a learning curve for us. Yeah, and so yeah. let's let's go through the read them. So flow through the column from the bottom to the waist. So column means column means from the bottom up to the waist or the trigger water. But actually, no, it just means to the waist. Column means just to the waist. C top means flow through the top from the top to the bottom works only when gas is source so I can push gas down through the, the column MXB flow through the mix chamber from the bottom so we don't have mix chambers so we won't go through that MW flow through the valve block to the waste so that's where these MWs are here number six TRM Flow through the column from the bottom to the trital monitor. So that goes up here and goes out to the trital monitor. And then flow through the column from the bottom to the trital monitor with flow time correction when more than two columns to deliver. And this is flow through the column from the bottom to the waist with flow time correction when two columns are, when more than two columns to deliver. So. Um, and then amidite flow into the amidite bottle works only when gas is a source. That's A. So in other words, as a destination, you can actually put, put A as an amidite here. But that's saying it's going to flow to the bottle. <laughs> when would you do that? <laughs> if I wanted to recapture, it'd be, a, it'd be a way, but I'd have to actually write a subroutine. So you may have a subroutine that says... Put the put, put put the machine to bed, kind of you know. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So you could write wash subroutines, dry subroutines, things like that that you can run, and you just call it up as a step at the end of your your process. So if there's anything specific you want to do after you run your synthesis, then you can use that as another step in your in your cycle. Okay, single column pointer, that's that guy. Pointer for serial execution of, of that part of the subroutine, which lays between the two on markers. So the parts of the subroutine which are beyond the columns. So it's saying that it'll, it'll go into that in more detail. So, okay, delay simply means wait. And that's just gonna wait for 10 seconds and do nothing. The branch field contains um, the execution of, of the branch whichever is called for that amidite. And when we get into that part of it, what you'll see is in your sequence, as you start to couple that base of the sequence, that's when it starts to look at your branch tables. It's gonna say, okay, it said branch one, I'm gonna couple an A. So it's gonna look at amidite A and find out what branch is in that branch one table. Okay, so this is um, another, this is a critical part of it. So we, we looked at those and we, we talked about printing these all out. So this is that single po pointer programming. And if, if I were you, I'd study this a little bit, you know, just to make sure you uh, fully understand this because um, what happens is if you're running two columns, it's a little bit different than when running one column. But the single pointer works the same way. It's just, there are different things that are gonna happen. So assuming all eight column synthesis on the H8 and following this subroutine, this is gonna tell you what's gonna happen. So when parameter one column mode is set to no, so it's in no for one column mode, it's in two column mode. 
The subroutine will be executed as follows. So step one, one second of ACN flow through the valve block to waste. One second of ACN through the valve block to the main waste. Okay, step two, one second of gas flow through the column, through all eight columns to the waste. So column, COL means through the column to the column waste. So the first it, it said ACN to the main waste. So it washed out the channel. Then it said dry all the columns at once to waste. Now here's where we do the next thing. Okay, step three, 1.3 seconds of TCA through columns one and two to the trital monitor. And the reason it's two columns one and two is because of the single column pointers. So it's gonna flow 1.3 seconds TCA to the trital monitor. Step three, and it's gonna do columns one and two. Step four is 0.1 second weight idle only for formal marking at the end of the single column pointer. So you don't have to put that in there, um, but basically it gives you a little more wait time after it's done this. It's gonna wait. And what it's gonna do, since I've got the markers here, okay, it's gonna do this 3A. So in other words, 1.3 um, seconds of TCA through columns three and four to the trital monitor, and then 4A is the wait. And then 3A again, 1.3 seconds to column five and six. So it's gonna go first columns one and two, do this. And then it's gonna go columns three and four, do this. Five and six, do this. Six and seven, do this. Or, or seven and eight, do this. So you're gonna basically perform a 3A and a 4A on each of the other columns. So <clears throat> if we're running a double column, like, like you're showing here. So you're saying that the TCA will still go to columns three and four, five and six, seven, eight, even if we're just doing one and two? Um, so you're, you're not, so um, first of all, it would have to have, um, you'd have to be using those columns. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so if you're not using the columns, is, yeah. let's say you're not using three and four, it's only gonna do one and two. Gotcha, yeah. 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 So okay. you're gonna actually have to be running a synthesis on that column. Yeah. But let's say you're running all eight, because that's what this thing, assuming all eight column ah, synthesis. Yeah. Mm. So then it's gonna say, run these two, then these two, then these two, then these two. Just for that one little thing, it's gonna do it for each of them, separately. Okay, okay. that makes sense. Then it's gonna wait three seconds, and then it's gonna do wash to the column one at a time. So, so step five of the sequence was that wait. And then step six means I'm gonna put 0.7 seconds of ACN through one and two to the waste. And then I, I do a, a formal marking of seven, and then I do so I do column one and two, three and four, five and six, seven and eight. And then at the end, we flow three seconds of gas through all the columns. Three seconds of gas through all eight columns to the waste. And then we do a two second weight idle. And I think this is a two second weight idle. So this explains what it's gonna do in two column mode. In one <coughs> column mode, it's gonna do the exact same thing, only it's gonna go one at a time, instead of two at a time. So it'll do all of these and then jump back. So it's literally in this subroutine, it's running from one to, tw to 15, to 25, but it's, it's gonna do this, whatever's in those two parentheses to each column one at a time. Then it's gonna jump back to here. Then it's gonna jump over, to, then it's gonna move to here and it's gonna do them all one at a time, one at a time. Okay. Then it's gonna go to here and do everything at once because it doesn't have that pointer. So when they're saying single column mode to yes,
when one call mode set to no. Okay, we're gonna do that. So when one call mode is set to yes, it's basically the same thing, only it's gonna go through one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Exact same um, process, only to each column instead of two columns at a time. Okay, so now, now we're looking at switch speed, amidite, and reagent. So used when source or mixed is amidite. Okay, switch speed, amidite. So when either of these is an amidite, like tet and amidite, so then it's gonna use this switch speed. And used when source and mixed are not amidite, but any other reagent. So anytime there's an amidite in these two, it's gonna use this amidite speed. And when source and mixed are not, so anytime there's um, cap A and cap B, let's say, it's gonna use this one. And that's the switching speed. So it's gonna say, step one, flow through all columns to waste in switching mode. Valve cap A on, valve cap B off for five units. So it basically, what this is saying is it takes the, the, the time, basically, and, and puts it five units. So whatever this speed is, it's, it's gonna switch it five, five times. So cap A on, B off for five units. Then it's going to flow through all columns to waste in switching mode. With cap A off and cap B on for five units. Until two seconds from the field timer over. So these don't necessarily have a timer. What it's saying is I'm going to switch. I'm going to go this on for five units. And, and this off, and then I'm gonna go this on for five units and this off. Does that make any sense? This is, um, so I'm, I'm saying, I'm gonna turn this on for, let's say the units are um, 10 microseconds or, or something like that. I'll turn this on for 10 microseconds and that's gonna be off. And then I'm gonna turn this on for 10 microseconds and that's gonna be off. And I'm gonna keep doing that until this two, two seconds runs out. Oh, okay. So that's for the cap A, cap B mix? In? Yes, and yeah. that's that switching speed here. So there's, they're calling it units because it's not necessarily a, a number, but it's a, you know, inside the software, there's a curve and it's saying one, two, three, four, five, and it has to do with the switching speed of the valve. And then we're gonna say, wait, two second idle. And then we're gonna flow gas through all columns because we don't have a column pointer. I'm sitting a little bit low and it's starting to get on my shoulder. Okay, so then it's gonna um, stay, stay step 1B. It's going to flow, uh, wait, we're on step 1C, which is the weight. And then we go step two, gas flow through all columns emptying of the columns. So we're gonna basically empty out the column. And then this time we're gonna go three seconds of amidite and tet, which means it's gonna use this one. And it's gonna do that on for three units, off for three units, on for three units, off for three units until the two second idle time is done. Until that three second, I, I, until that three seconds is done. And then it's gonna wait two seconds and then flow gas through. So basically it's gonna mix Mix the cap A and cap B, then dry it. Mix the, mix the amidite and activator and then dry it. And then mix the amidite and activator again. And this time for two seconds. And what it's saying, because that amidite number was three. So it's saying that the tet on and the amidite off were three. And then the tet off and the ammonite on for three. So this, I think you'll probably want to read this section good and just kind of match it up because 
you know, the, the problem is it's talking about things, you gotta keep switching back to that page, but maybe, you know, especially when you're reading it from the computer, but maybe if you have the manual and you're reading it, you can follow along in the subroutine and see exactly what it's showing you. Mm -hmm. So these are the add times that we talked about. Um, these are the add times when you're flowing more than one column. So assuming all eight column synthesis and flowing and following the subroutine. So again, this is basically gonna show you what that add time does. So the time adding or time correction will be executed only when more than two columns have to be delivered simultaneously. And what they mean is two columns because there's not really a more than two mode. So this should say more than one column. Or when two columns. <laughs> yeah, or when two columns, yes. So step one, we flow through all the columns. So step one, flow through all the columns to waste. So one second, flow through all the columns to waste. And since it's column plus T, add time correction. Add time ammonite flow. Since we're dealing with an ammonite, we're going to add time ammonite flow. The time correction will be calculated as follows. So, so eight minus two. So you've got one second up here, and we're going to say the add time for ammonite is two. So eight minus two is six. And the reason we were saying minus two is because we're already dealing with the one um, with its two seconds, but we're trying to add for all the other ones down the line. So, so it'll be that one second plus six times 0.2. That's the add time of the, the flow. So here's the flow time and here's the column correction. And then here's that, that amidite correction so it equals 2.2 seconds. So this is a little misleading, but basically what, what it's saying is I'm going to, for the next column. So since I've got two columns, I'm gonna flow the one second in this column plus the 1.2 seconds in the next column. So it's it's one second for the column I'm at, one second for the next column, which is because it's two columns, and then 0.2 for that correction. So basically it's, it's gonna flow the one second here, the one second here, or this 0.6 times the uh, point 0.2 and then you're, so you're going to get this 2.2 <coughs> so then the next step step two flow through all comp toys for one and a half seconds plus time correction add time reagent flow because we're going to be dealing with a reagent that's the, the uh the acn and here it's going to look at the reagent flow is 0.4. Yeah, so what this is saying is you've got six columns left, six columns past here. So as you get to this next column, it's gonna be less and the next column's gonna be less. Or there's eight total minus the two that we're already dealing with. And so you've got six, so plus six times that 0.2. And in here, we're gonna go plus six times the 0.4. So we'll be at 3.9 seconds. So it's gonna add more for the amidite because we've selected more in our amidite chart. Okay, so the next one would be, we gotta go back up to step three. Now we're gonna go flow two seconds of amidite and reagent to the column plus time. And in our chart, we have an ammonite and a reagent, which is 0.2. So
So we go 0 0.6, 2nd am ammonite and reagent so we go 6 times 0.2 again we get 3.8 because we're at 2 seconds here and the next one we say we flow through the column um, add time mix reagent and that's this guy mix reagent so it's 0.3 so we basically do um, 1 second times plus 6 times 0.3 2.8 seconds and then we float to waste in, the, in single column mode. One at a time. Because of the two markers. So again, look that over real carefully. Um, that has to do with adding time when you're floating more columns. So it's not gonna necessarily um, stop you from running this instrument if you don't understand that real well. But uh, whenever you do start to go to two columns, you kind of want to prepare yourself for what you're actually going to flow. And you go through those calculations and say, here's how much I'm actually going to flow. And I'm going to give you the flow chart that I made already um, that's going to tell you what you're actually flowing through the, mm. through the column. So you have that number. So branch allows the execution of the subroutine due to the amidite in the sequence. And it's very useful for coupling programming. So that's typically where we use it, is in the coupling. So many following sequences in steps six of the synthesis of the subroutine. Okay, so step one, two, three, four, five, six. So specifically step six is what they're looking at. And here's the C, C, G, A, C, T, G, A of all the different columns. So each of the columns has a different sequence they're running, but on step six, here's gonna be the sequence. And so this talks, this is going to talk about how the branching is going to occur. So let's say I, I, I come upon this one and I'm going to branch and I, I'm going to go with a C. It's actually going to look at all the C's and try to do those. So when the subroutine execution reaches step seven above, the above subroutine, the program checks which amidite occurs in the sequence on column one. We saw that was a C. There's a C in the example. The program checks in the table, the subroutine's name from the table on the place pointed. So it's saying branch two. So we look at the C's table, branch two is this one micro branch, one new branch. The program executes completely the subroutine one new branch, which is pointed by the number from the field branch. The branch subroutine in this case, one new branch will be executed for all sequences in which C occurs. So it's actually gonna run that branch here, here, and here. Then it's gonna come back up. Columns one, two, and five. So when the branch subroutine is finished, the execution returns to step seven of the subroutine, which is this guy, and we have a wait, and then we have, uh, an, uh, we have, it returns to step seven, okay. <coughs> returns to step seven of the subroutine and checks the next amidite, which is not involved yet. So it's basically gonna try to couple all of these. So it's gonna say, um, first I did a C, and now I've already coupled this one, so I'm not gonna go there. I'm gonna go do G's. And then it's gonna couple that G. It's gonna use the, the branch from the G amidite and run that branch. Then it's gonna go down and run that G branch here as well. well and then it's gonna come back up to step seven. Yeah, what's the value two there? Then you go That's to branch that. two. Can I see what that is? I'm just... That's that one, one U branch because it looked up C's branch too. So then it would have to look up G's branch too and run whatever branch that is. G's branch too happens to be the, the same okay. branch. Okay, when that branch is finished, it returns to step, se so, um, step seven. 
and checks the next ammonite which is not involved yet, G in column three. So the program checks the table from G for number two, which is one micro branch. Program execute completely the subroutine one branch for all sequences in which G occurs, three and seven. When the branch is finished, returns to step seven of the subroutine, checks which was not involved yet. A. And that's because there's no subbranch assigned to it. That's because it's already done all the C's and all the G's, but then it said, okay, here's a new one, A. And so it's gonna go and look up A. Okay. And look up two, and now it's gonna do U mix, one U mix. So the program executes completely all one U mix, all sequences in which A occurs, in the example four and eight. So four and eight. And now the only one that's got left is T to do. So when the branch gets back up to step seven of the subroutine and checks the next ammonite, which is not involved yet, T on the column in six, the program checks the T's table and says, it's one new branch again. Place number two for T, which is also one new branch. When branch subroutine is finished, the execution returns to step seven and checks the next ammonite, which is not involved. The execution resumes at the step at eight. So after it's done, all of the branching for all of the, the different, after it's looked at all of these and, and executed this branch for all of the different uh, bases, then and only then will it go on. And it's gonna wait. And then it's gonna continue on to do the wash and dry. Yeah. So, so you have to assign what, for each of those bases a uh, sub-branch to? Yes, a branch and, table. Yeah, yeah a branch so, table. But yes. if there isn't one, let's say for A, would it just ignore it then? Yes. And, and uh, I, like, you know what I mean? Yes. I, I've just got a, I've got a question here that somebody just asked me recently. Um, I just want to know if it, it's just so it wouldn't get like stuck or something. Like if you just wanted like a couple bases. Yeah, to... so it's not going to, to um, cause an error. Yeah. It's just going to roll on through. Okay. Yep. And this is why I like to save those emails. Um, you know, when somebody asks a question and we answer the question, I, I definitely save it because um, yeah, he's saying you got it all right. Okay, so now let's talk about the um, bio editor because this is the end of that, that software manual. So these last few things I'd say I, I would really consider each of you taking that manual and just you know going through it again, especially focusing if you're gonna do programming on those last three items where it talks about the single column pointer down to the branching. Um, 